that we will be taking Q&A at the end of the session, so please do uh, feel free to type your questions into either the, the chat or the Q&A session. We will hold those until the end. We'll save about five or ten minutes until the end, and then we will take all questions and answer them um, at, the, at the conclusion of the presentation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Doug Tidwell. All right. Thanks, Janine, and hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us from wherever and uh, whenever you may be uh, out there in the world. Uh, as Janine said, I uh, work in IBM Software Standards Group, and part of what I do uh, is talk to people about new technologies and talk about ways to keep them open. And a big part of what my group is working on these days is the Simple Cloud API. So for the next few minutes, we'll talk about ways of writing code and working with things in the cloud. We'll talk about how Simple Cloud fits into that and some of the many partners IBM is working with uh, to make that happen. We'll also take a look at LibCloud, which is a project at Apache, and uh, we'll wrap up by talking about some ways we can all work together uh, to make sure that cloud computing stays open and also to make sure that customers, people who are using the cloud, uh, have their needs met uh, to make sure that the industry is actually uh, paying attention to what all of you need. So a quick look at our agenda there. Uh, as I said, we'll talk a little bit about programming interfaces in general, uh, different ways of doing things uh, where we've uh, tended to move as an industry over the last few years, and we'll talk about how Simple Cloud uh, fits into that picture. Uh, we'll talk some about openness. Uh, there are some principles uh, that IBM and many other companies uh, have put together to talk about how cloud computing uh, should be kept open. And as I said, we'll wrap up with a few things uh, that you can do to uh, stay abreast of what's going on in the world of cloud computing and also work with your peers, IBM, many other vendors, many other customers uh, as we go forward with this exciting technology. So a few words about programming interfaces themselves. Uh, as, as you look at any sort of service, uh, I have a piece of code running on my machine and I would like to talk to something out there in the cloud, uh, there's basically four ways of doing that. And as we look at this, um, I hope this will remind you of what we've done with web services over the last eight or ten years. Um, a lot of the same technologies and architectures that make sense with SOA, they're just as applicable and just as important in the cloud. So as I said, we'll look at four different ways uh, of using some sort of remote service, and then we'll take a look at how Simple Cloud fits into that picture. So if you start at the very lowest level, what we're doing here is we're simply writing directly to the REST or SOAP API, whatever that may be. Uh, some services on the cloud support both REST or uh, ROS, excuse me, support both REST and SOAP. Uh, most of them choose one or the other, and that's what you have to work with. Uh, this, in terms of, of overhead, can be very efficient uh, because you're not going through a lot of, uh, of objects and other uh, uh, programming techniques. Unfortunately, it's also very uh, inefficient in that you and I, as developers, have to handle all of the details ourselves. So things like parsing XML or dealing with HTTP headers, etc. Uh, all of those things fall on the shoulders of the developer. That's typically not something we do anymore. So if you look at the SOAP world, uh, you know, eight or ten years ago, you might have had to do that. You might have had to parse your own XML messages as they went back and forth. Today, you don't have to do that. So just to take a look at uh, how this might work with the cloud. On slide six, I've got a couple of applications that are accessing a storage service in the cloud. Uh, one of them, uh, application one there, is using a REST request. So it's basically opening 
a URL with some parameters there. Uh, the second application is using SOAP, which is using uh, the XML envelope there to package up the request and its details. Those get sent off to the service in the cloud. Well, the next step up, if you look at level two, uh, in this case, we're using some sort of toolkit to build those requests ourselves. So we're still having to think in terms of, I need to put together an envelope or build a URL string and somehow send that out to the service. Everything on the bottom, right? How do you think of first you can use a lot of work we completed here, isn't it? Um, <laughs> okay, um, let me uh, continue here. Um, so with with level two, um, as I said, you're writing at a slightly higher level. Uh, we're still, from a development point of view, we're still thinking uh, in terms of what's going across the wire. Uh, 